The block library, as the name suggests, is a library that holds all of the blocks that are used in this space. If you're a content editor, you probably won't spend a lot of time here, as this is mostly a developer-focused area. Storyblock uses a component-based approach to content management. Blocks are simply these modular components that can stack on top of each other to create content. The block library is where all of the definitions of your components and content types are stored. There are three main types of blocks. Nested blocks, content type blocks, and universal blocks. For some examples, a banner is a nested block, an article page is a content type block, and key takeaways is a universal block, which technically means it's both a content type and a nested block. Blocks can be copied, moved, deleted, and customized easily, which in turn makes reusing and repurposing content much more efficient. This list basically shows every single block that exists within the demo space. You can also use the search bar to find a specific block. You can leave all of your blocks at the same place, or you can create different block groups to better organize them. To do that, you can simply click the plus new group on the left side, choose a name, and press enter. Now you have a group with zero blocks in it. To move a block to a group, you can hover over it until the Options button pops up on the right side. Then choose Move to Group and select your group. You can also move a number of blocks at the same time by selecting them on the list and clicking on the Move to Group button here. Alternatively, you can also copy these blocks to another space or even delete them. Since blocks are the heart of content creation at Storyblock, we've made it very simple to create a new block. You can click the plus new block button on the top right of the page to create a block from scratch. You can also edit your existing blocks. Let's do that. Let's select key takeaways, which is a universal block. In the new window, you can see the fields that make up this block. Let's say we want to add a new field here. To do that, first we have to give it a name. Let's name it key takeaways. Then we have to choose the field type option. You can see we have various options, each for different use cases. You could go with normal text era, which is probably the best case for some basic takeaways, or even go for a markdown or proper rich text editor that gives you structured content in JSON format. If you want to build references or create a selection, you can go with single or multi options. Or you may want to use some images here, which means the asset or the multi-asset type would be the best choice. You can also extend the Storyblock interface with your own custom field type with what we call plugins. They allow you to build an integration with an internal solution or third-party vendor. Since we don't need any of that for a text box field, let's just go with a rich text editor. Now we have to click on Add, and here's our new field. New fields are always added to the bottom of the list. You can simply drag them to wherever you want them to be. Let's put this one right after the table field. If we now select the text box field, we can change the settings in the new window. For example, you can mark it as required field, so all key takeaway blocks must have the text box filled before being published. You can also select if the field is translatable or not, or set a max number of characters. Once you hit save, you have your new universal block added to your block library. I mentioned before that you can easily create a whole block from scratch, so let's quickly do that too. First, click on the Create New Block button. Now, choose a technical name for your block and choose its type. Let's call this one Alternative Blog and define it as a content type. Here, you can also choose if the block belongs to a block group or not. Now we have this blank canvas that we can use to create our alternative blog content type. You can add fields here just as we saw before. Then you can go to the config tab to configure your block, like setting the block icon and color, or its display name. You can also use presets, which first have to be added inside the visual editor. We will also take a look at this later. 